Hey everybody, Reef Girl here. Well, it's time for an update, so let's go on a video journey of what's been going on with this tank over the past couple of weeks. Acclimating mollies and getting those into the new tank. They're making themselves right at home. Getting corals ready to start moving them. This is from the 29, my toxic green cabbage leather. Put it on the sand for now. Next up is the toadstool and it's going there it's pretty angry and what have I got acclimating here I have the biggest turbo snails I have ever seen plus a couple of cleaner shrimp these guys are doing really well in the tank they've all fit right into where they're they're doing their job and uh, I'm very very pleased with them got them on sale so that always helps Toadstool, green cabbage leather, and here's one of the turbo snails doing his job. Then I decided I needed to sort out the flow for, for real. A couple of nano streams and high door power heads. And I also got one of these little babies, the random flow generator from Vivid Creative Aquatics. And this thing is fabulous. I can say without reservation. There's the scoli moved over. And here's what the pectinia looks like in daylight and in tank light. Moved the Bengal torch down here, but I didn't really like it in this spot. Here are some fish getting acclimated, ready to go. And here are some new corals. So here we have the flame hawkfish finding his way around. This algae scrubber saved my tank because the skimmer was not skimming. If you saw my other video about the skimmer DIY skimmer stand turned to refrant, you'll know that I had nothing but overflow from this thing for a solid four weeks. So the algae scrubber was the savior. So I finally started moving the coral to where it needed to be. And here's the cabbage leather where I decided to put it. Looks good there moved a few other things around, getting ready to acclimate corals from the 20. This is tank water from the 20, putting all of those corals in there. This is ba basically batch one. And then I'll run the acclimation hoses and once they've acclimated for a little while, I will start uh, putting them into the new tank in the places that I want them. There's actually quite a few. And uh, I think I'm going to have to do all of this in about three or four batches. Here's a little video of the fish being fed. These guys are wonderful. The uh, spot breast angelfish pair, male and female, and the flame hawkfish, along with all the mollies, everybody just feeds so well, which is wonderful because I know it'll keep them healthy. And there's a maze brain with his eyes or <laughs> mouths, I'm not sure what you call them. It actually had tentacles out as well. The Duncan opened up within about two hours of being placed here, which is fabulous. And there's the Japanese finger leather that was a frag that was in the sump of the 20 gallon. Pectinia, scolimia, button scoli actually. And this little beauty was identified on the website as a lobophilia, but I knew from the photo that it wasn't, and I'm about 99% sure that it's a scolimia, perhaps another button scoli. So I mounted the torches up on the rocks, and uh, they're doing really well. This is where I initially had wanted to put them. And here's the Bengal torch. It had been on the sand and just wasn't doing as well as it should. So up here it gets a little more light, and now that I have all of the new power heads in, it gets really good flow. This is the Tonga Blue Short Tentacle Torch. And the Purple Torch. Looks black under this light, but it's actually the dark purple with the green tips. It's loving it right here. And a Season's Greetings Montipora. A couple of Octospawns. The Cave of Candy Canes and Blastomusa. I still have a few more to move into here. And a daytime shot of the season's greetings. So I really hope this is enough light for it. 
that's where things stand at the moment and it'll probably take at least another two weeks to finish moving all of the coral.